You may have noticed on previous videos the Christmas tree pictures that are behind me here. Um, I made these years ago and they come out year after year after year at Christmas time as part of our Christmas decorations. They're free motion embroidery with scraps of fabric and are ideal projects for you if you're a little bit insecure or not confident about free motion embroidery or if this is the first time that you've ever had a go at it because you don't need to be particularly accurate and they're very, very quick projects. This is what I'm going to show you how I made today. So I've got two trees on this one. So I'll take you through all of the ingredients, all of the tools that I've used, and then show you how to make this really, really simple picture. Here's how we do it. As I'm going to have two trees and two pots on my picture, I've already cut out two pieces of greenish fabric for the trees and then to have a contrasting colour for the pots. These can be any colour that you like. And onto the back of each one of these pieces, I've fused some bond web. This is a fusible adhesive. It looks like a paper sheet when you iron it on. You iron the shiny side to the wrong side of your fabric and then you can draw on your design, whatever it may be, and then cut it out. And then we simply scratch away the backing and this then irons onto the fabric that you're going to be sewing it on and I've done this on all four pieces so for both pieces for the trees and both pieces for the pot. My backing fabric is just a plain white cotton and I've drawn the size of the inside of the mount of my frame so I know the area that I'm going to be working in so I don't want to go outside of this area and that would be the same whether you're working with um, a frame with the mount like the ones behind me um, or if you're working with a canvas and you wanted to stretch it around the canvas. Obviously make this mark in an erasable ink pen or maybe a chalk or you can just put a, a, a couple of dots, uh, four dots in the corners if that helps um, so that you're not putting too many markings on there and then you know exactly the area that you're working with. But the most important thing about free motion embroidery or one of them is the foot that you're going to use on your sewing machine. So this is the one for my um, Elna. They, you will need one of these feet and they do look different depending on the manufacturer and make of machine that you're using. So this is a closed toe, so in other words it's a, a complete circle and uh, the needle goes in the centre. You can see I've got little markings so that I know, I, I can gauge where the centre of the foot is. This may be an open toe, so it's like a horseshoe shape. Um, it may be um, metal, it may be a different size, but do check with your sewing machine manufacturer that you've got the right free motion embroidery, free machine embroidery, or darning foot. Those are the three names that are normally given to a foot like this, but you will need that. So let's pop that on first of all. You'll also need your screwdriver because we're going to take off the ankle of the sewing machine to put this one on. So let's pop the foot down. So we're going to, let's take the foot off to start with. We don't need that, that hanging on there. Um, we're going to undo the screw at the side here and take off the ankle, which is the bit that holds the foot on. So sometimes you have to take the screw all the way out like I do with this one, sometimes you don't. Just remember when you've taken this off to put it somewhere safe because you won't get your regular feet back on again if you lose that. Now with your foot you can see it's got a spring in it and it's got a bar that sticks out of the side and then there's the clamp that the screw goes in. So this goes into the same place as the ankle that you've just taken off. This bar here needs to sit on top of the needle clamp. So the screw that holds the needle into position needs to sit on top of there so that when your needle goes up and down, that's what makes the foot bounce up and down. So make sure the needle's in the down position when you put this on. I'm just going to lift that up again and then pop the screw back in again and just screw it so that it's finger tight. And then maybe one little twist again with your screwdriver at the end. Don't over tighten though, you'll find it difficult to get off again. And then as you can see when the foot goes down and the needle bar goes up and down, that lifts the foot off the floor here. So your foot is kind of going to hop across your fabric. Now another thing that is useful is if you can drop the feed dogs or the feed teeth on your sewing machine. A lot of machines like mine will have the button at the back here that's not quite stiff that you slide over and then these feed dogs disappear. They're inside the machine, so my fabric can now glide over the top of here without the feed dogs drawing the fabric towards you. Now different machines have different facilities. 
So if you have a drop feed dock facility, uh, facility, absolutely ideal. You may have a plastic plate that covers over your feed teeth. I'm not a fan, to be honest, because the, the ones that I've used aren't too secure, but that covers over the feed dog so that they're still working again underneath it, um, but that it's not affecting the fabric, because the idea is that you're going to move the fabric in the direction that you want it to go, not being fed from the front to the back of the machine. If you don't have either of those features on your sewing machine, then set your stitch length to zero. So the feed teeth will be up, but they won't be moving. So you can still move your fabric over the top. So you, you can get around this even if you can't drop the feed dogs on your sewing machine. Oh, just to mention as well, when you finish and you go back to normal sewing, um, your feed teeth won't automatically pop back up again when you switch the button over. You'll need to make your first stitch or turn the hand wheel towards you and then you'll see them come up. So don't think that you've broken your machine because the teeth have disappeared inside and won't come back. They will come back up again when you start sewing. Now thread wise, you can use whichever colour thread you like. I'm going to use a bright red. A lot of the time with threads, um, when I'm doing free motion embroidery, I like to use black or a very dark grey or very dark brown, so the lines really, really stand out. Um, but this time I'm going to use red because it's a little more festive. It'll still stand out against my green trees. And I'm going to use a polyester thread which has a little bit of a sheen on it. You can use your regular cotton sewing threads, you can use your cotton polyester blends, you can use a polyester, it really doesn't matter. But how about having a play with some metallic threads? so slower if you're using metallic thread because the heat can tend to make the um, the thread stretch and break so just take your time with that one there we go. or use a metallic needle they can come coated on the inside of the eye so it helps to, to cut down on friction okay so I've got my thread I'm all ready to go so let's get all my components together um, trees and pots and we're doing two trees here and I'm literally going to cut out triangle shapes. These don't have to be any particular size. They don't even have to be symmetrical. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to fold my fabric in half. I'll cut the base so that it's straight and then cut from the top to the bottom. I will give this a quick measure for you if you wanted to be accurate with your measuring. But that looks about right to me. So let me just bring up my rather large ruler. Um, my large one measures six and a half inches by four and a half inches across. I'll put those in centimetres on the screen for you as well at some point. And then I'm going to have a second tree which is slightly smaller and that's going to be in front. So again let's cut this in half, fold it in half sorry, and cut it into a smaller triangle shape. Then I'm going to need two pots. So I'm going to have the pink one in the front. And again, I'm not worried about these being symmetrical. So I'm literally cutting out a rectangle with two longer sides. I think that, that will be perfect. And then maybe, maybe a tall, thin one for the top one. An idea would be, if you're not too confident in cutting freehand, to cut these out of spare paper first of all, or scrap paper first of all, so you're not wasting any fabric. But mine, mine are pretty good like that, I think. So now I need to take off the back of the bonder web. So I'll just give that a scratch in the centre and peel it away. So at this time, this isn't sticky. It doesn't become... Um, kind of adhered to the fabric until you iron it. So let's take off all of these pieces like so. And then we can iron them in place. So I'm going to start with the back tree first and then iron this one over the top afterwards because I don't want to, I want to embroider underneath the front tree. So I want to go around the back tree first and then place the first one in front of it. So I'll arrange them as I want them to be and then take the front one away and iron this in place. Now this is pretty permanent. So if you just want to make a quick picture, you don't have to sew this. Now pictures don't go in the washing machine so it's not going to uh, come undone. 
and then I'm going to place my pot just underneath there in the centre and again iron that in place, no steam. And then we can start to embroider. Now just to mention, you probably noticed, I do have some tearaway stabiliser on the back of my work and I've simply added that on with a little bit of 505 spray. That's fine to use with your sewing machines. Don't need to use it if you don't want to. Don't rush out and buy it, but if you've got some, that'll hold it in place. And the reason I like to put a stabiliser on the back is because we're going to do quite small stitches and we could be going over and over in the same place. So if I'm just sewing onto fabric, the fabric can pucker up a little bit as I'm sewing. Put the stabiliser on the back and it helps to keep your fabric nice and still. Another thing that I like to use, not, not everybody will go out and buy quilters gloves to free motion embroider. I like them because these have like the silicone fingertips to them. They're double sided, but you can grip onto the fabric and move it around. I find if I don't use my gloves, I end up kind of hanging onto this and trying to move it this way. The gloves I find are an awful lot easier. So always have a, a practice. If you've never done free motion embroidery before, it's worth practicing on, on scrap fabric, first of all, just to get the hang of the movement and the way that you're going to sew. Um, but projects like this are so simple. You don't need to be accurate with them. You don't need to be an artist. It doesn't matter if you go outside the lines and if your stitches are different lengths. The idea is that you're being creative and you're having fun while you're doing it. So I'm going to sew around the edge, first of all. So sometimes when you put your foot down, the foot doesn't actually look any different if I show you here. Foot up, foot down, it's not actually moving. Because remember, it's the needle bar that makes this jump up and down. So make sure the foot is down. And I'm just going to sew around the edge. I'm going to stop after a while with my needle down and just snip off that long thread that I started with because I don't want to sew over it. So the idea is, with three motion embroidery, that you're going to sew at a consistent speed. That could be a slow speed, it could be a fast speed, that is entirely up to you. But try and keep it consistent so that your stitches are the same length. Again, it's not really important for a project like this, but that's the idea. And as you can see, I'm pushing the fabric under the needle, and I prefer to go backwards with it, or push it to the back of the machine but if I wanted to turn around and come this way then I can do and I'm almost going over the same lines if you want to stop stop with the needle down and move the fabric around and I'm saying almost because I want it to look quite scribbly if I've got a perfectly straight line and I'm sewing over it with a perfectly straight line, it all looks a little bit too neat to me. So I want this to look like I've literally sketched around the edge of the Christmas tree with thread. Which really is exactly what you're doing. So that's how it's looking at the moment. I'll do the same with the pot in just a second. I thought it might be quite fun to use some Angelina fibres as well, which are these little strands of threads and just drop some over the top of the tree. And then I'm going to sew like a garland shape around the tree. Now, if you wanted to, you could draw this on with an erasable pen. I'm going to go from one side in a curved line to the other and then back down again to this side and then all the way down to the bottom. So it looks like a garland going around my tree. And I'm going to throw some of these over the top and just sew over the top of them. Maybe a few more, let's give it a, let's give it a good bit of sparkle here. They won't all be trapped in the stitches so we will be taking some away afterwards. And I'm going to put my gloves back on again and re-sew it. So again, your, the foot on your machine will push some of these out of the way, but it will trap some, which I think is quite fun. Just have to keep unravelling that a little bit because it's um, getting tangled up in the foot. And again, I'm going back over the stitches again, 
I like to do this three times. That's just my preference. And again, back down to the end. So as you can see, it's trapped some of the fibres, but not all of them. So the other ones I can just brush away and I can use those on the second tree. Fun, isn't it? Then I'm going to draw or scribble or stitch around the pot. Change colour threads at any time if you want to. So obviously I'm using red on red so it doesn't stand out too much. But I could use a black or a grey or a green. As I come up to the centre here, I'm going to go up and down a few times and just make a, a tree trunk. And that really is one tree finished. So let's pop on the second one. Now be careful if you're using Angelina fibres to get them out of the way of the iron, <laughs> because they may melt. So let's put the second tree in place here and it's pot underneath and I'm just going to line up the bottom of the pot so they're at the same level and iron it in place. And then just like before, I'm going to sew around the edge and then throw on another one of these sparkly fibres. So I'll unglow the gloves and away we go. There's my tree, and just like before, I'll sew around the pot. And over to the middle and make a stalk. brush away any of the fibres. These will all be trapped behind uh, glass if you're going to put them in a glass frame anyhow. But a lot of those are actually trapped in the tree now which I think adds a little, a little bit of shimmer but it's not too glittery. Now this is the point where if you're going to add any other extra embellishments, so maybe you have some gems, you want to pop some little gems on there, you could do some more pre-motion embroidery and make a star to go on the top. If you wanted to add little bow decorations or maybe buttons, then now's the time to do this. Obviously, the, the, the thicker or the deeper the embellishments you put on there, the less likelihood you're going to be able to get it behind a glass in a frame. But you could always pop this into a box frame or again, stretch it around a canvas. Then all I need to do on the back of my work is tear away the stabilizer, pop this into my frame, and it's finished. So I hope I've just given you some uh, really simple ideas. Maybe this is the first time you've done free motion embroidery and you just want to get started and you just want to have a go, but you want to produce something. By the time you put these into a frame, I think you've got a really kind of professional finish to something that is really quite naive and very, very simple to make. So go have a go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I shall see you again very soon. Bye bye.